Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking this time out to listen. Today, I titled this message, You Really Don't Want to Do It. You Really Don't Want to Do It. There is an it that some people are suffering with right now. And I say suffering with because they are in a place where they're just stressed and they really don't know what they want to do. And so there's an agonizing, irritating, uh, just confusion that I want to do it, but then I don't want to do it. And then, okay, I really don't want to do this, but I'm a press forward anyway. Okay. And as I'm describing it, I know, you know, it sounds a little bit confusing, a little bit odd, um, you know, especially for the person who's not going through. I don't know what you mean. I mean, I need for you to explain it better. So that's what I'm going to do in this message. People will obligate themselves to things for benefits, for opportunities, for more money, for a number of things personally and professionally but they really don't want to do them they find out something along the way and they say mm -mm, this isn't for me but they talk themselves into doing it anyway then once they talk themselves into doing something that they really didn't want to do from the beginning then people around them suffer the consequences because of their selfish motives. God gives us signs, saints. God tells us, you can back out. You don't have to do this. But, 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 we say. But I have this bill to pay. But I have this uh, person I need to contact. But I need to do this because if I don't, so-and-so is going to be mad. But, 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 but. So what about the inconvenience? That's what I'm saying to some of you all going through much. So what about the money you might lose? So what? What do you really want to do? I remember a woman asked me, what do you really want to do? Well, what I don't want to do. No, what do you really want to do? Well, I want to do this. I want to do that. Okay. So why aren't you doing it? Well, um, and then when you start listing the reasons, notice the reasons are about others. Sometimes it's not so much about what you want. It's what somebody else put in your head. And so now you're going along with it. Initially, you may have been okay with it. But then once you've seen that some things aren't right, somebody comes along, notices that you see some things aren't right. And then they try to convince you, some quite successfully, to go ahead on with it. And then later on, you have regrets because I should have listened. I should have never done this. Now I'm putting not only this burden upon myself, but those around me. And then you take your anger out on others because of your foolish mistake, because you went against the grain, because you went out there and did something that you really didn't want to do. And some folks around you don't even know. That's like a secret, right? It's a lie that you're living. Come on. It's a lie that you're living. You're sitting up there and you're telling yourself that you really want to do something. But then you really know, you know that you really don't want to do it. But, hey, if I give myself the sales pitch, right, and I convince myself, then maybe I'll convince other people to go along. Meanwhile, they don't really want to do it either, but they're doing it because they love you, because they care for you, because they want what's best for you. And then once you start mistreating those folks and when you start disrespecting those folks and then they go to God or God is with them every step of the way, then that's when you end up losing. And you thought you lost big time last time. Oh, you haven't seen. You haven't even begun to experience the loss that you're going to go through because you did it again, possibly. You talked yourself into doing something again. You never learn. Some people never learn when they go out on dates. They say they're not going to do A, B, and C, and they go head on and they do it anyway. They never learn. You went out with good intentions, but then you turned around and you ended up going against 
your personal boundaries, your standards, your morals, the things that you grew up with. You went against your Christian teachings, the things that you know that you shouldn't be doing. And then some folks will justify going against the things that they know to be righteous and true and honest. They'll justify it. They'll say, well, the reason why I did it was because I don't know who I'm speaking to today. All I know is that I have been so moved to share this message with some folks because they're always doing something that they really don't want to do. Okay, maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration. They're often doing something that they really do not feel passionate about, do not really want to do, have agonized about it. Their body has even went through some trauma as a result. But I'm going to do it anyway. And who wins in the end? You see, too many times we go off into territory where God is nowhere around. We try to say, oh, sure, you know, God is there and he's with me. No, he's not. Not when it comes to sin. So you need to stop telling that lie to yourself and to others. God's not with you when he told you to go right and you went left. God's not with you. When he told you that it's just you on this journey and not everybody else because I'm answering your prayers. You said that you didn't want to be married anymore. You said that you didn't want your children around because they were this, that, and the other. You said that you didn't like this one and that one. You said that you didn't want to live in a certain community anymore. So I'm taking you off into another direction. You said it, but but Lord, I, what I really meant, no, you said that this is what you wanted. Now you want everybody else to go along with the programming. Come on, some of you all. Job opportunities. You said this is what you wanted, so God set it up so that it's going to be a benefit to everybody. Right? Not just you, but to everybody. So then as time goes on, you realize, wait a minute. What did I just do? Everybody else is happy. They're content. They're good. They're good to go. They like where they are. They may not have liked in the beginning, but hey, they eventually they adjust, right? But you start having reservations about your decision. So what do people do, right? When they don't really want to do something, they start going around. And the same people who they talked into going along with the programming, they try to undo the programming. But let me tell you something. God has a way of... Blocking that sort of thing from happening. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this blessing. We're okay with it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But then, Debbie Downer, Negative Nancy, Drama Dave shows up and wants to change everybody's mindset. But wait a minute. Didn't you want this, Drama Dave? Didn't you want this, Negative Nancy? Well, yeah. Okay, so then why is it that we're changing the script? Well, because I don't like what this person said to me. Or I thought that the environment was going to be A, B, and C. And, you know, really, well, no, no, we're not going to go along. You're not going to do it. That's why you never make a move, okay? I'm talking to some folks because I have made many, many moves. (laughs) Trust you me, in my lifetime. You never make a move, With everyone on board when you're not 100% convinced that that is what you want to do. If you got to still talk yourself into this opportunity or whatever it is. All the way up to talking to whoever you need to talk to. And you shouldn't be going. If you've got to pull people along who are portion up against it they're dragging you down or they're you know hesitant about it then maybe you need to reconsider well doesn't the devil work in situations like that he does he does but there's also just simply the human spirit that picks up on some negativity right around the corner because God puts something in some of our spirits those who pray that says that this isn't right But we go along with some of these things because we know 
that folks is going to mess up, folks is going to make some mistakes, folks are not really going to be 100% convinced about what they're doing, and so we act as protectors at times. Other times, we are nothing more than prophets who we loom back, you know, we stay in the background. Aren't you coming with us? With us? No, mm -mm. Why aren't you coming with us? Because this is the day that the Lord has made. <laughs> Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And I'm going to be glad from afar. I'm not going with you down that road. But, 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 and some folks who are out there in the world, they get mad at Christians that do that because it makes them look bad, especially the narcissist type. They want the whole world to look at them as being so great, so wonderful, so nice. You got it going on. And when that Christian speaks up and says, I'm not going along with the programming, oh, the narcissist is quite angry. Psychopaths, too. Bipolar folks, too. And then the sad part about some of these folks that will flip, okay, the script on you at any given moment due to any type of personality disorder they're suffering with is that you may have invested your money in something. You may have pulled some uh, contacts yourself. You may have set up all sorts of things, and now they want to do a 180 on you, right? So that makes folks angry, too. You've got to be in prayer, saints. You've got to be in prayer because maybe, maybe you did go along and you convinced yourself that you should be going along. Or maybe you went along and it turned out to be a great opportunity for you, but not so much for them. Or maybe you are just on a fence too. Then why are you going along with the programming then? Forget the money, forget the house, forget the car, forget all the promises that that person made. Do you know enough about that individual to be going along? Because if the signs are there, things like complaints, constant complaints about something. Okay. If the signs are there that they're very quiet <clears throat> and they don't have much to say, when you <clears throat> ask them questions, OK. And they're saying things like, oh, I, you know, I don't know about this. Wait a minute. Well, did you sign that paper? Yeah, but. OK, when they say things like, well, I don't know, I'm concerned about you concerned about me. I'm good. No, but, you know, I'm really concerned that you don't want to do this. I already told you I want to do it. Now, if you have in second thoughts about it, you see. They're not convinced. They don't really want to do it. They've got some reservations about it. And that's okay. What we do is we say, take your time. Okay? You don't need to do anything right through here. I mean, I don't want no drama later on behind you doing something that you really didn't want to do. How many people end up calling something rape that really wasn't a rape? But they went on with it. And it felt like a rape, see? It felt like one. It was heavy. It, was bur it burdened them. It was... A lot going on inside their minds, but they went on and did it, and then they triggered all sorts of memories, memories that they didn't know they had of abuse. And now everybody who touches them or anytime they get intimate, they their mind tells them it's a rape, okay? Yeah, you got some folks out here like this, and that's why men, especially young men, don't be porsche about wanting to do things with folks. And if you're a child of God, you already know what the Bible says. So whatever comes... Your way as a result of stepping out of fellowship with the Lord and participating in sinful activities. Well, you reap what you sow because God puts things in his word for good reason. And later on, you find out the hard way why he did what he did, why he said what he said. Because he knows man's spirit, he knows woman's spirit, and he knows how we do things and we really don't want to do things. Or we do things and we really want to do them, but then some bad stuff is right around the corner and he tries to warn us. I know years ago he tried to warn me, but I pressed on anyway. Pressed on anyway, even though I didn't really want to do some things. Okay? Now sometimes God will move on our spirit to do some things and we're just fighting with him about it. And he's saying, but this is a good thing. This is righteous. This is, you know, it, it meets the checklist, right? We're not participating in anything sinful. We just don't want to do it because we're lazy or we procrastinate. Or we have an attitude with a certain person because, um, you know, we got some unresolved issues with them. And I don't really want to work with her. I mean, this is a good opportunity and everything. And yes, you know, we're making good money and all that. But I don't really like that particular ethnicity. I don't really like that gender. 
Okay, I know how them folks are over there. Okay, so then you go in with a negative attitude. You really don't want to do it. And then the very thing that you were thinking in your mind, yeah, all they're going to do is end up firing me anyway, or I'm going to end up firing myself. Okay, then it's going to come to pass because you're going in with a negative attitude. You can't blame anyone for that. You can't blame anyone for that. God set you up. You went in. You started off positive and then eventually you became negative and you didn't like this and that. You were easily offended. You were sensitive about some things. You carried burdens. You know, you made people feel uncomfortable. And anybody who has some power say, guess what? I'm getting rid of this person because they're showing me that they're not going to rebound from something I said way back when. They're not going to change from that negative mindset. They like to harbor, you know, emotions. They're not a team player. They fight, you know. They start formulating all sorts of opinions about you. And it all started because, well, you really didn't want to do it. But God was there. But no, I really don't want to do it. So I gave you various examples of how this thing grows. Starting off with, I don't want to do it, to now, I ain't got a job. (laughs) I don't have a wife or a husband. You know, I never got the kids that I really wanted because I was too busy messing around with somebody I really didn't want to be hooked up with. And I rode that thing and I rode that thing, right? And then you still at 30, 40 plus years old don't have what you really want. But you can be able to get what you really want when you say to yourself, I'm going to stop with all of this negativity. I'm going to stay positive and I'm not going to let people blow me around like the wind does with a leaf. I'm going to press forward and I'm going to make the most of an opportunity because I know God is involved. Or I'm going to stay behind because I know God isn't involved. I'm not going to be that one that's going to miss out because I'm just so negative. I'm so bent out of shape. I've got issues with anybody and everybody I encounter. I'm not going to do this any longer. I'm sick of living this way. And I'm telling you, there are people that are in hospital rooms right now and their heartbeat is barely, barely active. And eventually God's going to shut them down. And you know what they're thinking about? Because some of them can't even talk. But you know what they're thinking about? They're thinking about all those times that they had opportunities and didn't take them. They're thinking about all those times when they took opportunities that they shouldn't. They're thinking about the negative as well as the positive concerning folks over the years. They've got their share of regrets. They're hoping and wishing and praying that the Lord will give them another chance and another one and another one. And some of them, it's it. It's curtains. It's over. The final act was already played a week ago, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And the family is setting themselves up for the morning that is to come. And there's a message coming dealing with grief. Because we got to go back to that again because I'm seeing in the spiritual realm that my network, they're about to say goodbye to some folks that God is ready to take on through accidents, through illness. Okay, so be in prayer for these families. They don't know, especially the unbelievers. They don't know what's right around the corner. They're having the dreams. God is knocking on their hearts, telling them, pick up the phone, do this, do that. And they're just like, nope, I'm not doing it. Okay, well, you, you, (laughs) if only you knew what was right around the corner. So this is real saints. This is real. This isn't made up. This isn't fairy tales. Real people are struggling right now. With decisions that they're about to make. Decisions that they already made. There are people that's going along with programming. And then when they wake up from that programming. They're realizing they made a big mistake. There's folks that have done way too much too soon. Some of you all need to get that book. If you're internet dating too much too soon. Internet dating blues. Don't sleep on that. Because some of you guys and girls. You keep going around and around and around. And are you getting what you want? Most likely not. Well, I thank you so much for taking this time out to listen. And as always, to God be the glory.